right, so uh, yeah, I, I, you've probably heard me before, but I run a group um, mainly in Denver for WSP, it used to be Parson Brinkerhoff, um, and our primary function is to provide visual communications for transportation projects. Most of those are um, in line with projects that our firm is engaged in, bridge work, civil work, um, some architectural work, uh, and you know, quite often involved with public involvement or stakeholder communication supporting the project. And we, we pretty much use every visualization tool out there in some way, depending on what the goals of the project are and what, you know, is trying to be communicated. Um, during the design phase of the project, you know, the usual goal is to explain to people some different alternatives for design. What are some of the options we're looking at? What are, um, different alternatives for design of the bridge towers, for instance, what it's going to look like from different areas in the community, um, and for designers, just what, what is the result of um, different aspects of their design. So this is sort of the traditional way we do that. This was done for a kiosk presentation at a public meeting for this bridge in New York. But what we've been trying to explore more, um, I alluded to it last night in the VR, familiar, or the VR presentation, can we create new tools that engage the public or the designers in different ways um, to do things a little bit differently than they usually do? And one of the first attempts at this was using a game engine to develop a uh, driving simulator based around a roadway project that we had already done animations for. So we had a great model, and all we needed to do was convert it to um, UDK, uh, Unreal Development Kit, and set it up to drive on a three computer sync setup so you're getting a different image along the screen. And it's normally pretty smooth, at least when you're driving it's pretty smooth. Um, yeah, that's weird. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I turned it off. I turned the wireless off. So, this was a, a different way of experience, experiencing the project. You know, holding on to the wheel and controlling what you're looking at as you drive through it. Maybe it's a subtle version of virtual reality, virtual reality, but I think it really changed the experience for people who are in it and kind of made your brain connect more with what you were looking at. So another project that we've uh, kind of used a few times, uh, a tool that we've used a few times is in partnership with a company called Allwise. And what this is, it's a viewing device that's made to look like the old uh, viewing devices you see at parks and things. But it's really just got a tablet inside it, and it's running a pano tool, much like what Mark showed earlier. And you know, we helped develop the OS for the, the device, but we mainly, our main function was developing the, the visualizations that went inside it. And we've had some opportunities to do some uh, different kinds of presentations with it. Um, some have been around designs for projects. Uh, for instance, um, this was one where we, we set up a proposed rail system in Doha, and that device was sitting on the street, and you would look through it, and you could look over here and see you know, a, tra a transit station entrance across the street. There's another entrance over here. But behind it is a photograph of what you would actually be seeing if you were looking in the direction that the device was pointing. So virtual reality, augmented reality, I'm not sure which that is, but it's basically a panoramic photo simulation that showed before and after, and the device kind of showed the viewer which way they were looking. So they got a connection to reality, and then they could see what was in it. The device also allowed them to um, record answers to questions, so they could make comments on what they were viewing. Um, I don't know what the results were. We never really uh, heard what happened in Doha with it, but a more interesting one was in San Francisco. It was set up on Geary Street, which is sort of out on the west side of San Francisco, and it was set up to show a proposed BRT station. So this station in the street doesn't exist, but it's, pay, it's photo sinned over a panoramic photograph of the location, and the device was out there for six weeks. It never got damaged, it actually got tagged, but, uh, <laughs> Overall, it remained in place and intact for the period of time it was there, and I think they collected several hundred comments from the public on the proposed project. So it was a viable um, NEPA tool. You know, part of the NEPA process is to collect input from the public. And so this was a, a great tool to actually have right in the community where the, the proposed project was. Um, another, another 
project we used the device on, which was even more interesting, was a project in the city of Napa, where the, the mayor of Napa wanted to show people what the city was like um, in the past. Everybody thinks of Napa as just a wine town. You go there to drink wine, uh, maybe buy something expensive. But historically, it was a really, uh, it was a functional port for most of Northern California. And so the device was placed on the Napa River Bridge, and we developed a photo simulation showing, or this is actually a 3D rendering, showing what the view off the river bridge would have looked like in the past. And again, the device lines up the view based on where you're looking out, just like these other VR devices you're seeing. Um, what was interesting about this project is the 3D model was developed from old photographs. So we took the photographs and roughly lined them up with the real view of our, we had a 3D model of the existing condition, and superimposed the photos and used that as a base to develop the 3D model of the proposed condition. And this uh, image here, that's the mayor standing in front of the device on the map of the bridge. Um, this was an interactive model that we made for a project in Massachusetts, and it was brought to public meetings where folks could where folks could um, review different views of the proposed bridge and then judge it or uh, set it to show in different color palettes. I'm just barely seeing a little tab down here, but I can click in that, and it changes the color of the bridge. So they could pick a different view. They could try different colors on the bridge. See how it looked from different points with these different color schemes. And again, it was just used to collect input from the public over um, about what kind of color palette they would want on the bridge. So this virtual reality, I don't know, it may be just on the other side of the line, but you know, interactivity, I think, is just more engaging to the public. Um, oh, can't close it. Okay, great. Um, I've shown this many times before, but I think it was just a great, um, a great tool uh, for engaging the public, and it was fun. It was pushed out uh, through the Apple Store and iOS, and it's running a UDK model, but it's using the device to allow people to drive, so that as they tilt the device, it steers your, your uh, car, your virtual car, as you drive through the system. And then it lets you look at the different stages of construction and where you're going to have to be when you approach the bridge during some uh, interim phase. So it was informational, but it engaged the public because it was interesting and fun to use. And uh, cool. Um, now we're dealing more, now we're trying to explore some of these newer devices. You saw a lot of them in the Pavilion, the Oculus Rift. I think the Vive has really sort of stepped up the game. It's, it's probably the highest resolution. Um, and really all it involves is, is developing these panels again. I just love the way these look when you see them uh, and played out horizontally. This is a panoramic rendering of an animation through that bridge that we're showing up in the pavilion. They're kind of interesting looking. Um, the next generation is augmented reality. There are a few devices. I think the Neoscape had one of these HoloLens devices um, there where you're actually seeing through the device, but it's overlaying image on um, the screen. One of the obvious uh, applications is in the lower right there for training or um, asset management or inspection. It's going to overlay information on what you're looking at and feed you uh, something about what you're seeing. Um, we worked with uh, Condot to develop a model of a bridge in Connecticut, the, the Q Bridge. And it's hard to see in this photo, but the way it looks when you're wearing a HoloLens is the bridge is sitting on the table in front of you. And the, the theory is you can have multiple viewers standing around this model as though it was a physical model sitting on the table, and it would present that model to all of the viewers. It was really just a prototype to see what could be done with the HoloLens. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about construction. Uh, I think there's a lot of applications for these tools in construction. You know, we've done a lot of work with Navisworks and tools like that that allow you to create real-time interactive models of your worksite. Um, on the left, you're seeing a 4D model that shows construction over time, but it's in an interactive model, much like on the right. 
and we can bring in contractor equipment, we can bring in um, various aspects of the design, and that's an interactive real-time model that can be managed in a meeting, people can ask to see it from certain viewing locations, um, layers can be turned on and off. Just a little more engaging than a standard passive um, animation would have been. This is just the animation of construction showing again kind of typically what we end up doing on these passive um, presentations and that jerk is just too much. I'm not gonna watch it. Um, another application in construction that we're we're seeing coming about are from all of the vendors, I think Autodesk and Bentley have tools that do this. You can take your 3D model that you've developed. And as long as it's in a project coordinate system, you can push it out to a device, take it to the field, and it's geo-located in the field. So you can look at the device and hold it up. And in this case, they're looking at a proposed installation of MEP facilities, and it's overlaid on the image that you're seeing of the device. So it, it locks you into where you are on the site and shows you what's being proposed for construction. Um, I'm going to show just a little sample of an interactive tool that was developed for training. So this is a, this was done for, I'm not going to remember the client acronym now, but it's for inspectors looking at bridge scour. And it just, it allowed them to look at different bridge configurations and it showed sort of to teach them some of the, um, the terminology and then to sort of show visually what occurs when you have a flow event and how a scour occurs. And there are just different bridge configurations. It's a real-time model, so you can look at it from anywhere you want. I believe you can put different configurations of piers and walls in. And you can look at it in different um, visual methods. You can change the opacity of the water. So it's just sort of a way of teaching people about what is scour, how does it affect different types of piers, but it's interactive, so it's a little more engaging. One last thing I wanted to show in real time was a, a model we developed for a highway project. Again, the, the idea <coughs> is that this would be used um, first in the presentation to the client and stakeholders, and eventually to be used with the public. But it allowed you to look at the project from different locations. It's interactive again. And it had some key intersections locked into the model as viewpoints. And then it had layers you could turn on and off. It had the existing condition, and then it had the team's proposal for that location. But because our, this was a design-build project, and the design had changed slightly from what the client had proposed, so a layer was added that showed the DOT alignments on top of the proposed design. So it's kind of cool you could go in and sort of look at, well, we're moving this slightly because we think it's more beneficial for flow or something like that. It also had a staging model that kind of showed several stages of construction and just roughly how traffic was going to be routed during these different steps of construction. And again, it's all real time. So I'm just excited about taking all these concepts, but now portraying them in a more immersive environment like what we're seeing in the room over there. I think it's uh, it's close. We're not quite there yet, but to be able to do all of these things but with a much more immersive and realistic uh, environment would be huge. So, thank you.